statements were recorded recently at Ryan Air Attack Base when an unidentified Hemet news reporter interviewed Captain Suxby, Air Base Manager at Ryan Field. So the news reporter wouldn't misconstrue the captain's replies, Chief Comley, Ranger in charge of the Air Attack Base, was on hand as a monitor to make sure the real story would be told. At this time, I would like to turn the mic over to the reporter. Uh, thank you. It, it's a typical hot and dry summer day at Ryan Field, and uh, I'd like to find out some information about uh, the air attack program. Uh, uh, Ranger Cumley, I'd like to talk to you uh, about this program. Uh, however, uh, the person I'd really like to converse with is uh, the air co captain, and uh, I understand that's Captain Suxby, and uh, he's out on a flight. Uh, is that his airplane coming in right now? I just soon wait until he gets here. Yeah, I do believe that, that's him. Uh, looks like the airplane. Yeah, that's him. Uh, Captain Suxby, Captain Suxby. Can I have a few words with you for a second? Captain Suxby, I understand that Ryan Air Attack Base is a proving ground for new aerial firefighting techniques. I see you're using clear retardant. Would you like to comment on its effectiveness? You're fucking right I'd like to comment on it. On it ain't worth a shit, because you can't see it. The only way you know it's been dropped is when the airplane comes back empty. What the captain means is that the use of clear retardant is an effective means of controlling wildfires in ecologically sensitive areas where unsightly red retardant might provoke adverse public reaction. I see, Captain, you've got a lot of construction in progress. The budget provided must be quite generous. Can you give me some background on the financial side of the air program? Yeah, I'll give you some background on it. There ain't no fucking budget. Those assholes in Sacramento don't give us enough money to buy toilet paper. We gotta lie, cheat, and steal just to get our paycheck. Those peckerheads gave us an extra dollar. We'd have to invest it in scotch tape just to hold this place together for another season. If I didn't have free convict labor and a bunch of scrap material, we'd all be living in tents. What the captain means here is that the opera operating on a limited budget requires some uh, resourcefulness and hard work on the part of the crews who man the air attack base. Uh, captain, I know you work for the California Department of Forestry, but I see that the U.S. Forest Service also shares the facility. Can you explain how the two agencies work together? Work together? Shit. <laughs> Did you even try to work with those fucking feds? They're so busy up in the control tower filling out quadruplicate forms for their overtime that the only time we see them is when they come down for more coffee and fucking carbon paper. What the captain means is that the two agencies work quite well together with equal division of responsibilities, oftentimes combining their workforces to affect timely completion of various air base projects. Uh, captain, how do you like the O2 as an air cold plane? I guess that having two engines is a comforting feeling when working over remote areas and rugged terrain. Shit, they should have left those goddamn things in Vietnam. I never understood why the Air Force pilots got as a deduced duty pay until I flew in one of those Polish helicopters. I'd like to try for a Skylane any day. What the captain means is that the Department of Forestry has recently phased out single-engine aircraft in order to preclude forced landings in wilderness areas resulting from engine failures. Uh, you mentioned, Captain, that the Airco plane and the S-2 air tankers can be airborne in less than five minutes. How long does it take to mobilize that large air tanker? Well, that overgrown bucket of bolts is the biggest joke I've ever seen. The first thing we got to do when it's dispatched is hunt down the friggin' pilot. He's usually in his swimsuit sunning himself. So when we finally do find the mother, we got to get him dressed into his airplane. By then, the fun has just started. Assuming that the co-pilot ain't asleep in the ready room, he's running around that thing like a keystone cop putting oil in the propellers or some goddamn thing, I don't know. But anyhow, by the time they get strapped in and get the air started, the S-2s are back for their second load. But, uh, Captain, you didn't answer my question. How long does it take to get the plane airborne? About three days. <laughs> what the captain means is that although the larger air tankers can haul considerably more retardant, their mechanical complexity warrants a greater degree of crew coordination in order to accomplish the lengthier pre-flight checklist and uh, related preparations. I see, Captain, that the pilots have a lot of free time while they're on duty. Do they also uh, pitch in and help with some of the daily work routine? Are you shitting me? I can't even get them to sign their pluck and flight reports promising to let them off early. Those lazy fuckers, all they do is sit around their fat asses playing cards and reading cock books all day. 
What the captain means is that the pilots often volunteer their help with some tasks. However, they are also provided a ready room where they can study their flight manuals and publications in an effort to stay proficient in their very demanding vocation. Captain, you stated earlier that you didn't like air tankers dropping before you arrived on the scene to direct the drops. Is there a problem? Fucking right there's a problem. There I was one day on my way to a brush fire in my spotter plane, and this tanker rides ahead of me and drops right across the head, splitting the frigging fire in two. So then I get there, and I got two fires roaring up this goddamn canyon and no anchor point. Fireboss calls me a dumb shit, and later when the fire's out, the son of a bitch and tanker pilot's a hero. <laughs> what the captain means is that in the absence of an airco or lead plane, tanker pilots will sometimes exercise their initial attack prerogative in order to suppress a potentially dangerous fire. Captain, don't you encounter a lot of smoke and turbulence over a fire? Most of us fire captains are pretty damn fearless. I've been eating smoke since I started as a grunt firefighter. I ain't never been scared until I got into some of the rough air over a thousand acre brush fire. Man, you don't know what rough is until you get dumped upside down that little turk tinker toy they call an airplane. I can't even keep my lunch down, much less work the air tankers. I wish it was still on a fucking fire truck. What the captain means is that the heavy smoke and extreme turbulence directly over a large fire are, are very hazardous to light aircraft it is. Under these conditions, the aircrow plane will normally hold an orbit upwind of the smoke and turbulence. Uh, captain, I, I suppose that you consider the aerial delivery of fire retardant a very safe operation, but I wonder, is there any danger to firefighters and uh, other ground personnel being injured by retardant drops? Well, those peckerheads on the ground, if they get dropped on, they deserve it. Every time those fuckheads call for a sport drop, they stand there like spectators at an air show taking pictures and picking their goddamn noses instead of getting their dumb asses out of the way. What the captain means is that all ground personnel are notified in sufficient time by radio to clear the drop zone. Should this become impossible due to certain terrain features, the crews then lie face down during the drop to avoid injuries. <laughs> Tell me, Captain, what is the normal height above the ground for dropping retardant? The lower the better. If those goddamn tanker pilots can't dig me a trench with that shit, I'd just as soon send them home. But I've heard that a low drop can literally lift a bulldozer off the ground. <laughs> you bet your ass it can. There's no better treatment for those egotistical dozer drivers than blasting them off with ten tons of wreck shit. What the Captain means is that the retardant dropped close to the ground is very concentrated and works well in penetrating the canopy of dense fuels. Ground personnel, as well as the air tanker pilots, take extra precautions during this risky phase of aerial firefighting. Captain, uh, uh, what would you consider the single most hazardous thing about working over a fire in the air coat plane? A goddamn spectator airplane. That frigging column of smoke seems to attract every son of a bitch in airplane within a hundred miles. I got enough problems with all them dumb bastards getting in my way. Well, sometimes they radio me and ask me to leave so they could have a turn over the fire. <laughs> well, what the, what the captain means is that unauthorized aircraft sometimes fly uncomfortably close to the fire area and pose a problem to the airco and the air tankers. However, on large fires, the FAA will declare it a disaster area to assure that no civilian airplanes will hamper the retardant dropping operation. Uh, thank you for your time, Captain. Screw you. Why don't you bastard print the real story and not spend all that fucking crap? What the captain means is that he enjoyed the opportunity to discuss the air attack operation with you. Oh, one more question, Captain. I see that a full-scale uh, air tanker operation attracts a lot of townspeople to the airport. Do you have any comments on this? You bet. Will you look at that little honey setting on the fence under the tar? What a beaver shot that is. What the captain means is, uh, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> look at that spread. Boy, you ain't shitting. Let's go over there and get a better look. <laughs>